Hello there and uh, happy 1st of December. We are finally in winter if you want and today we are in a video that um, yeah, I've been planning to do for quite a long time, but the, the thing is I just wanted to to be sure that I have everything at hand that I feel like capable of doing it. And I, I felt just, um, you know, trained enough in the game to do it. But today's episode is very special and I might just say at the very beginning already, this is my best build yet um, because of so many reasons. So. And the first thing is, um, if you guys want to check out this habitat, you can download it now from the workshop. It is available as a blueprint, you know that I usually don't do it that way, but this time I was able to finish it off. I fixed every issue, I spent so many hours in here um, to make, make sure that this all works. And actually it worked, I even tested that in various parks to see if all the textures of the different biomes work together, because I am doing that in the Tantra, Taiga, Tantra, I guess it's a Taiga one. Um, um, to just make sure that this is kind of the the habitat I want to um, go for but you know if you put that in any other biome it still should work and look nice indeed because I spend a lot of time uh, checking that this works and you will see in this time lapse even though I, I did cut out a lot of stuff like seriously I cut out so much stuff you cannot be even believe um, yeah I feel like almost it's uh, so special because I I had this idea already so much in mind that I had already a plan in my head um, for how I want to do it. So I could really go and and build this thing exactly how I want it. And, and you know, the thing is, and it's pretty cool though, that I, I was able to do it this way. Um, I, I could create finally a new style I wanted to go for uh, with one building. And this is what you see I'm preparing here. Um, like. The thing I wanted to build is a Siberian inspired Russian style building. Now, obviously the natural uh, habitat of the Siberian tiger, and this is what we are building. Uh, we are building a habitat for the Siberian tiger, but we're not building it like a one-off creative shot thing. This should be like a realistic approach towards uh, a habitat, how it could be in real life. Um, there are a few things I didn't do because it doesn't really work that nicely with the blueprint system. So I didn't do the facilities, because uh, it's always like a pain to, to bring the facilities also working in because then you have to go and, and make the habitat bigger than it is and just kind of work with different fences. But since when you do a habitat um, or you save a habitat, you cannot include other barriers that you're using just for the sake of barriers. So I did also put uh, in some uh, hints and notes uh, in some signs for you guys. You have to be active yourself before you can use it properly. Otherwise the tigers will escape. So this is why I put some uh, info uh, signs inside the building at the end. But now back to the story. I wanted to create a habitat that is um, really as if a zoo would do it and kind of provides every single bit you need, but still goes very much into the theming of the taiga. And also I included some music. I hope you guys also enjoy um, the different type of music this time. I feel like it just fitted so well in here or it fits so well in here, and, and, you know, because the very happy zooish music is not cold enough. I wanted to really get into the winter mood now. Uh, I really love the winter mood to be honest like very cozy you know outside is very cold inside you have you have a warm cup of tea and you you can just uh, sit here and chill and it's you know it's very cool and I don't know it I, I it has a certain kind of calming vibe to it which I do love a lot and I really want to make sure that I you know enjoy this this year as much as possible that's what I also want to bring in uh, with this episode so people have been also telling me lately, which I'm very happy about, that they enjoy the more calm episodes, the more relaxed commentary and, um, you know, most of it goes down to the fact that I'm feeling a bit more comfortable now uh, with Planet Zoo. After a few weeks, I am, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I arrived, uh, let's put it that way, I arrived in the game. So uh, I, I feel like I start to really uh, know what to do and know how to do and stuff like that. So it's, it's really... Um, what makes me a lot more confident in, in the work I do and so that's why I was going to start over here and, and testing my first actual architecture wise uh, actual build. Um, the Yosemite 
style though is for example not as complicated and not, not that difficult because we have many in-game pieces that already uh, help me doing that. But this is a completely different style over here and the lack of recallable pieces and the lack of um, some smaller uh, different pieces you could use, um, yeah, you know, it just put me up onto a challenge and that's what I want to have in the game to create something that looks different, that looks completely new. And best news for you guys, I was able to save uh, my work in terms of a little wall set. So if you guys want to go with this set as well, this will be made available also for the workshop in a few days um, because there's a little secret going on. So if you want to spend an eye on my channel tonight at around 8-ish Central European time, uh, there will be kind of the reveal of a little special and um, then you will also know how and when you will, uh, not how potentially, but you will know um, when you will get the uh, the, the in-game pieces I provided as the wall. So you will see at the end of this episode, I kind of have done this as a modular kind of thing, which uh, I usually don't do. I usually tend to build buildings uh, like completely in the flow, like organic. I usually go from wall to wall and just see how I can use it and, you know, go on from there. But this time, as you can see over here, I'm preparing the pieces first of all with this idea in mind as kind of a modular set. And yeah, I did a lot of research. Like I... Seriously, I spent a few hours researching where exactly the Siberian tiger is living and how the environment looks and if there would be buildings, how they would potentially look and um, yeah, it's it was a pity because like Siberia <laughs> is, <laughs> it's just like I knew that Siberia is gigantic, like it's, it's enormous, it's insanely big, uh, you, you cannot even believe, but the thing is, However, you know it, but when you then look onto the map, like on Google Maps, it is just like blowing you away. Um, if you just see how endangered the Siberian tiger is and how big the environment is, it is living in, it's almost impossible if you would go through the taiga there. Um, you don't even need to be scared of meeting a tiger that kind of would potentially kill you because the, the chances to meet is actually basically not non-existent anymore because it's just like there is so much space. There's so much space. Now, and this is why it was particular kind of hard to find a certain architectural style I wanted to go for. So what I did in the end, I ended up with, a, uh, with going um, with a very... East, uh, Far East Russian kind of architectural wooden, wooden building style. This is what you, you kind of get here. And um, I mixed up some of the, the yeah images I found. Um, I was kind of bringing in a bit of my own style here to make sure that this fits. I made it a little bit more Asian uh, with some of the style and elements than it would be, um, but it still looks uh, very Russian to me in the end. So I'm like, I, I feel like really um, happy with how it ended up uh, being and I, I'm also very lucky in, in how versatile the pieces at the end were, so I wasn't even expecting that. The only issue here is obviously it's pretty piece heavy and if you're going too close to the building you will experience some kind of little lag. It's not as, you know, if, if you're just moving around it's not as bad, but if you start building in that area it kind of takes a few seconds until you actually place that piece, so it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a pity, but anyways. Um, yeah, I, yeah, as I said, I'm I was testing a lot of different styles here and there to just see how I can do it. I'm also pretty happy about the roof style at the end because I, I managed to kind of create a roof that still is interesting to look at but yet is uh, simple enough to be believable as this kind of building style. Now. Talking a little bit more about Siberia um, is is very interesting. If you if you Google, for example, um, the Siberian tiger, you will most likely find images that are related to zoos, which um, obviously is pretty you know easy for me and pretty handy for me to see how they do it. But it's also um, very interesting to search even further for some realistic uh, photos from actually the environment, which uh, there are not that many to find, to be honest, which yeah goes down to the fact that there are, first of all, not that many tigers left, and second of all, uh, yeah, it's pretty hard to find them. It's that easy. So uh, I, I try to kind of mimic uh, the environment they live in as best as I could. Like I was going to uh, to search a lot of um, Google Maps. I was trying to find some some spots where I could take some spheric photos. Like for example, sometimes Google has these 360 degrees photos, um, even in the most uh, uh, kind of uh, un 
uninhabited or non-inhabited areas or how you want to call it like these areas where basically no one goes and Siberia is uh, definitely one of those places being most of the time very very cold out there so that's also why the Siberian tiger has some pretty cool things to it why it can survive these kind of areas by how the the body processes um, the cold and how it works with the heat uh, management of the body and uh, why they are always tending to be wet even though they are not but kind of tigers um, to produce the heat they need they, they kind of uh, um, have all the fur and stuff and beneath that fur there is kind of a, a layer of different systems if you will right, systems maybe the wrong word but of different systems um, that make it not even like I think if I read this correctly, they are not even sweating in that kind of sense, but they're producing a lot of humidity and therefore a lot of um, water as well, which then creates kind of a warm-ish um, kind of atmosphere within that fur, which keeps them warm. And that's also why, if you look at these images from those areas, they always seem like they, they are frozen from the outside, which is basically from, from the uh, humidity, uh, humidity they create, but it actually keeps them warm. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to go again with this little uh, trick that also Mike Sheets used a lot in his uh, recent Planet Botanic uh, water garden which he dedicated to the lady designer and let me say if you haven't seen that one holy crap I'm going to link that in the description below because this botanic garden he did there oh my gosh this looks so fantastic the the water garden it also there is so much thought also put into that I, I cannot even stretch how amazed I am by that but anyways um, we are now going to build something very interesting over here. So this is going to be a little creek that runs underneath that little bridge I have put in there as the guest walk over. So if you guys download this one and you want to make the guest go over, you basically have to start over with the bridge. Just put one piece in the middle, create that bridge over there. Um, you can also help yourself by using my footage from the very beginning where I created that bridge. Now, um, I wanted to have a little waterfall here in the back and this waterfall is also based on what you can see over there in in these areas like obviously if it's that cold this water would be frozen but still there is some time where the water is not frozen and if there's a lot of movement in the water it potentially wouldn't fr freeze anyway so I wanted to create that little uh, creek also with the idea in mind that this is more likely a zoo habitat and not actually in um, in Siberia, which is also more likely because you wouldn't bring people there the way I did it. They basically wouldn't survive it. Now, uh, yeah, I wanted to go for this um, idea by by just making this actually look like a, a proper zoo habitat, but a very, very styled one, a very nicely done one. And also this waterfall in the back gives you kind of a, a context to this area without actually making, making this area too much of a height difference from the rest of your zoo so for example if you have that waterfall you can easily put some backstage uh, facilities behind that one and connect this with the rest of this tiger habitat um, but yeah it was quite a struggle to basically make oh, I should say basically way more or less uh, often in here way more or less way less often that's the way I should say it now I had a lot of struggle with bringing the tiger back to that uh, wonderful waterfall so you can see the traversable area as always has been a big issue now I was trying to to figure out how I can make sure that it goes there and I was trying so many different things um, until I found a way of, of deleting some of the rocks and it kind of worked out now um, obviously I wasn't that I wasn't that happy with how it looked because the rocks obviously have that much better texture but I ended up deleting them anyways and I went for the realism and for the tiger actually <laughs> uh, instead of the problems. Now here you can see what I just meant with the um, barrier in here. You can see that there is a glass wall uh, in there which I put in and that is basically uh, pretty much needed because you cannot also you cannot use normal glass walls because they will climb over it uh, they seem to be climbable but yeah now what I've been building all the time uh, easily enough I'm now destroying a bit because I wanted to make this also kind of act as the shelter from one side for our tigers so that's why I'm I'm not completely destroying that area, but at least a little bit I wanted to destroy it so that it looks a bit more fallen down as if this is kind of a lost place in Siberia, which the tigers have basically taken as their little cave to live in. Now, yeah, as I said, this is uh, this worked out pretty well. I was quite, yeah, you know, I was really, I was actually really uh, 
confused that this worked out so well. But yeah, at the end of the day, um, all the preparation, all the research, fortunately kind of uh, brought me to the point that this all worked out and at a certain point I also found the style I wanted to go for and yeah I'm just easily taking that style to create this little bridge over here so again it's it's nothing major it's just like the idea was to kind of create a bridge and also a style that would be realistically doable by a zoo yet it should look very nice indeed and not as you know crappy as my little fairy tale castle because the fairy tale habitat I did a few weeks ago is mainly only a, a proof of concept it, it's not more but also not less however the style of the building was not as good as I can do it and as I do expect for myself which yes indeed it was down to the 4000 piece limit and I I do know why it was the way it was um, that's totally fine also because of that ridiculous hitbox of the elephant luckily enough uh, the, the tigers have a way more easy hitbox so it was a lot easier to create a nice looking entrance for them uh, which they can actually pass through so yeah that's that's it now as we have basically laid out um most of the habitat now this is now the time to make it a functional habitat without destroying everything i built and man that was a struggle this is where i potentially cut out the most uh, of this build because it was such a huge struggle and i still need to speed the whole process up eight times uh, so it's um, i'm sorry if it might be a little bit too quick but uh, i didn't want to stretch that video even longer because holy heck this would have been like hours and hours of work there are plenty of uh, cinematics at the end though so you will have enough time to spend a lot closer look to what i've done in uh, less speeded up <laughs> process I should say actually in real time so yeah now you can see I was uh, still doing the creek and at a certain point I just figured you know what people can even not see the path anyways in there so I went and just made this whole thing um, only with VFX and the in-game terrain editor rather than with the pathway however the pathway has been a good kind of ruler for me uh, which uh, told me the whole time where this one is but I'm still amazed by how good the water VFX are they are totally believable and you can do nice little creeks with it I would just love to get, like, like they are so good, I would just love to get one of those water ripple effects without having actually a source, if you know what I mean, so that we only have like a little bit of flowing water as a VFX, just a, just a simple one, that would be awesome, just give us a simple, maybe a rectangular little water effect with some ripples, or not even ripples, it would be even enough to, to have like a little bit of a waviness going on to make sure that this looks, um, like flowing water and that's about it you know uh that would be awesome and so if we can manipulate that with the 3d gizmo that is that's just all we need now yeah you can see now I'm placing some trees and let me tell you, this build over here is potentially the one build where I have thought the longest time about placing trees and foliage like it was for me so important to maintain some of the sidelines and to maintain some of the views if people look into that but still I wanted to also give the animals some kind of uh, uh, nice uh, little area to to you know, search from, for some shelter and some cover and also to, to hide away from the nasty views of uh, the guests in the park so yeah the guests um, also do not see the animals from every angle which I think is also pretty important to not make them stress out the whole time so yeah this, this habitat over here uh, should be a very 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 well functioning one for your in-game franchise mode whatever um, you want to use it for it might be potentially pretty expensive though I cannot guarantee how expensive it is, but uh, or cannot tell you exactly how expensive it is. But yeah, as you can see, I also tried to hide some of the pieces in trees. I must say this stretching post idea went very well indeed. You will see that at the end uh, in one of the cinematics. It looks pretty cool how the tiger is stretching itself on a tree rather than on this pre-made post. I mean, people have been using that kind of trick all the time, but uh, I think in this context, it worked out very, very well indeed. Now, yeah, this is kind of giving it now the final touches uh, to really see where I want to put the uh, foliage where I put the, the little grass and shrubbery to make it all look nice but yeah at the end of the day um, I cut out a lot fixing all the issues now you guys need to make sure that you have access to this building over here where our staff member is uh, pretty bored standing over here as I said you cannot use the barrier you cannot use uh, the bins and stuff you can basically all these things which come with path and with barriers are not usable uh, in the blueprint you have put to put that in yourself but yeah I will write this as well in the description of the blueprint 
just to make sure that you guys uh, have the idea of what I or get the idea. So you can see what I was starting over here um, with the barrier. I was trying different things to make sure that the tigers are not going to climb over. But I ended up throwing down a lot of rocks and basically using the rock hitbox to make sure that our animals are not escaping. As you can see, as it was in the background, just escaping over here. So I used a lot of the rocks to... Also, the texture is pretty nice, so I'm not even complaining, but yeah, it's just... I needed to do so much until they were not escaping anymore. You can see it, they just bugged through all the walls and kept uh, escaping. So I, at the end, put some walls in. As you can see over here, I was preparing with the glass wall and then I changed them basically into uh, wooden walls to make sure to blend it in with the actual walls and I have to say though it worked out pretty well um, at the end of the day they couldn't climb out so it's very functional but you have to do it yourself unfortunately which I'm sorry about now that's it this was the time lapse guys and now this is the final cinematics I'll leave you alone with the music now enjoy and I hope you enjoyed this episode until next time don't forget to download this one if you want to you know, check it out yourself. And also don't forget to comment if you liked it, what you want to see next, blah, blah, blah. All this kind of stuff I said already. Have a wonderful 1st of December, guys, and bye. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRedCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click the sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys. Yeah.